we'll hear from our first speaker, James Turner. Jim is the board chair of Citizens for Health, a national organization um, with thousands of members. A principal in the legal firm Swankin and Turner, he represents businesses as well as individuals and consumer groups in a wide variety of regulatory matters concerning food, drug, health, environmental, and product safety matters. Mr. Turner has served as special counsel to the Senate Select Committee on Food, Nutrition, and Health, and to the Senate Government Operations Subcommittee on Government Research. Uh, he's been involved with many actions and suits against the FDA, and I'm proud to say is a board member of E.ON. So Jim will discuss um, the FDA citizen petition status now uh, that we filed through FAN. Are you there, Jim? I'm here. Okay. Uh, yes, I, I want to uh, just um, underscore for a few minutes the, uh, the concept of the citizen petition that has been filed on behalf of FANS. The, um, I say, and the idea uh, that um, is involved here is uh, basically facing in two directions. One is to put before the FDA, the agency responsible for writing food standards, uh, including the quality and safety standards, uh, the details of the situation as we know them to be uh, affecting the food supply from Fukushima. Uh, the, uh, the, the idea is to create a reservoir of knowledge that's available for anyone. The, the petition and its supporting documents can be um, accessed by anyone who wants to. Uh, we send people there who are interested in knowing more about the issue and to bring to the attention of the FDA the facts that are going on about uh, the, uh, the tragedy as it unfolds. Uh, for example, all of these regulatory uh, actions that are being taken uh, in China and Taiwan and so forth uh, can be filed as a part of this petition to the FDA. Um, it, uh, it, it is a way of creating a kind of a library or kind of a, um, a uh, as I said, a reservoir of knowledge that people can draw on who are um, uh, at any point in developing an interest in this issue. The, um, the person who's uh, just the first time uh, hearing about it could be sent here to learn, uh, or people who are really, really involved in all of its uh, details can look at this uh, record and see how the issue is unfolding. But it has the extra advantage of creating an actual legal force. Uh, the FDA is required to answer uh, the petition uh, by law. Uh, it is a fact that FDA does not answer any of these petitions, uh, or they just answer them in a perfunctory manner. They say um, the, um, that they're supposed to tell us at six months and a year, and they say, well, we're really, really busy with other things, so we haven't had a chance to get to your matter, but we will. But it does create an official formal record before the government that will require them to respond in some way. And that means a lot of uh, interests and activities that are going on by activist groups and other uh, concerned citizens that can be uh, filed in this petition actually become part of the unfolding decision-making. Some of these uh, petitions that are filed at SBA in this manner last for a long time, but eventually they see the light of day on the legal form and an event uh, can take place with uh, no possible legal action or uh, Congress taking any interest or the press. That's the, that's the facing toward the, um, the um, decision makers with this uh, petition. The other side of it is that it gives an opportunity for anybody in the public who is interested to file a comment with the FDA in support of the petition. Uh, the more of these comments that get filed, the more the uh, pressure is on the FDA to uh, recognize that it is a serious issue. Um, and indeed, we did take some trips up to Capitol Hill and mentioned the existence of the petition. And, and that was uh, one of the things that was we were able to get some attention, um, not necessarily activist attention, attention from uh, legislators, but at least uh, rhetorical attention. Tell us more, you know, call us on our phone and let us know what's happening. The point on all these issues that exist, uh, on, on, of which this is a major one, and in some ways maybe uh, the most important in identifying uh, threats to the food supply, 
Um, the important point here is that, by and large, people do not know that they're going on. They are, they are left out of the media. They're not focused on by Congress. The, the regulators shy away from them. And the idea here is to create a place where there is a constant pressure on the regulatory process and on the decision-making process uh, that it keeps building like drop by drop. And uh, as the issue becomes more and more difficult to be handled um, by the people who are in power, the more they look for, and not only them, but the rest of society, looks for something to do about this issue. Um, presumably, if we do this petition process correctly, as we have been doing so long, so far, the ideas for how to address the problem itself will actually be codified in the petition at the FDA. And uh, the way I've seen these issues work over the last 45 or so years that I've been working on them in Washington, they'll be very quiet for a long time, and all of a sudden, Wayne Day, an issue will break out and something will have to be done. And uh, at that point, on this issue, uh, we intend for what's in the uh, regulatory file to become the basis of legal action, uh, uh, perhaps legislative action by Congress, certainly investigation, and also a reservoir of information for the media to look at. So what we're looking for from the petition side of things is to build up more and more knowledge in that petition record and to draw more and more attention to it from decision makers, um, the media, and the public in general. Uh, that's the, that's the, the petition strategy, which is a part of uh, a much larger strategy to deal with the um, the whole issue of Fukushima that they have been working with closely, and um, we're hoping that, uh, and, and anxious and uh, happy to support. And Citizens for Health sends out periodic notices in this petition, and we will continue to keep doing that through our national membership. Um, and thank you, and I won't be able to stay on much longer, but um, uh, Mary Beth and Kim can both answer questions about the petitions very well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate the time that you spared for this today. Well, thank you for inviting me. 